Hello and welcome to the One Electron Universe. I've been searching for a cheap multimeter and found that there are tons of no-name Chinese multimeter brands with the same model number 9205 and all look similar and are also priced very similar. Not sure why this number is so popular. I decided to get the Enning AN9205A. This is, uh, there is also another Enning uh, DT9205A. Mm, not sure what the difference is. Uh, now I couldn't find any reviews on the AN9205A which I have got. So I have decided to review it. Now Enning is known for economical multimeters. This is one of the cheapest options. I paid about $10 for this, including the delivery. Now, before I start the review, do keep in mind, this is one of the cheapest digital multimeters out there, right? So, well, I received it in this bubble wrap. It came with, well, two manuals, one in English, one in Chinese. Uh, the multimeter itself, uh, interesting piece. Uh, it did. I mean, it does require a 9 volt battery, but this I had to add in, uh, so it did not come with the battery, of course. And uh, there were two lids. Okay, so that's what I received for the ten dollars that I paid. Uh, and uh, let's start. So, uh, as you can see, of course, the screen is quite big. Uh, and uh, from a construction perspective, yeah, the construction is okay. It's a bit tacky. It doesn't seem to have any jacket as such uh, and it's quite lightweight in fact uh, after i added the battery it's become a bit heavier but i guess it's mostly the battery's weight uh, there's a stand of course one screw exactly and that's it i think uh, yeah there's no screw in, in uh, underneath this battery uh, the interesting part is uh, this battery is a very snug fit uh, i had to really jam it in for it to go in okay let's see okay so now as you can see uh, this multimeter uh, promises a lot of things uh, we'll test what most of it uh, if most of it is true or not uh, so first thing first uh, the resolution on this is 1999 so it basically means uh, it, it basically is a four digit multimeter uh, with the highest digit being one right the moment it switches to two so 2000 200 whatever you need to go to the next range and we'll look at the ranges so let's see what are the specs and uh, the specs are written in this manual uh, though i will not uh, kind of uh, so if you look at it yeah so it can do dc voltages uh, up to 1000 volts hmm, with a resolution of one volt uh, ac voltages up to 700 volts with a resolution of one volt again uh, it can basically do current uh, a DC current in the micro ampere ranges uh, and of course in amperes now here the interesting part is though both currents go up to 20 amperes the 20 ampere here is unfused so it's unprotected um, so you better use it at your own risk in fact you know what any high voltage high current stuff I would rather not use this multimeter of course, I will do test some of it. Uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, this is the interesting part. So it, it mentions frequency and temperature. It's not there. No, I cannot see frequency or temperature here and I don't think it's there. Yeah. And of course, it can also measure capacitance up to 200 microfarads, which is kind of okay. Uh, uh, you, will, you will probably need something higher if you are working with heavy duty electronics uh, but not for the kind of things I am planning to work on what else do we have here yeah of course there is a transistor test which is this and we'll have a look at it it also does continuous uh, testing so there's a continuity test with audible we'll test that out uh, what else yeah I think that's it all right let's do some tests okay let me switch this on okay uh, as you can see we have capacitance resistance DC voltage, AC voltage, AC current, DC current, and of course the various voltages. Now, of course, because this is a manual meter and not automated, you need to choose the ranges. 
uh, I would always recommend recommend going to the higher range first before kind of testing it out. Uh, second is let's have a quick look at the uh, uh, the probes. Uh, now, of course, the LEDs uh, here. Of course, uh, I'm not sure if it's focusing. Yep, it says cat tree. Yeah, I wouldn't trust that. Thousand volts definitely doesn't look like something that can handle thousand volts. Okay, let's test. Let's uh, let's test a few components uh, what do we have here okay let's start with resistance uh, all right so this is a bunch of resistances that i have okay first let me now i do know that this resistance is 10 ohms uh, but let's see okay i yeah let's start with 20k let's see okay let me plug the lids in okay the red one goes here and the black goes here the red is positive the black is negative normally when you're dealing with voltages so here it's voltage resistance and diodes all right let's see let's see how this works and all right obviously it's out of range so i have no idea what the value is it shouldn't yeah it shouldn't be showing anything it should be showing zero that makes sense okay uh, Let's let's just go to 200, which is the actual value. And yeah, it's 10 ohms, and it's 10 ohms. Now I don't know if you know how to read uh, the resistances, but yep, this is 10 ohms, no doubt. Okay, let's go to a slightly higher one. Now this is interesting. So this is 220. Uh, let's see if we can measure it at the 200 range. So this is 200. Uh, this is 220. It's going to go over range, and anytime, anytime it gets goes over range, it will show a one here. Ah, the other good feature at least about this is the dial is a bit tacky it, sometimes uh, it, it's confusing as to what you're looking at right i mean there, there are too many options here however the good part is that the multimeter screen at least the lcd shows which option you are on so right now we are at 200 ohms so let's try this uh, and uh, yep as you can see we are over the limit of 200 let's try 2k which is the next range and yes it is uh yeah roughly to 16 which is yeah which is okay within tolerance not bad uh let's try the next range uh, this is 10k obviously this is not going to work let's just go to 10k 20k and try it out yep uh yeah close yeah i kind of have a feeling yeah this multimeter will probably require some calibration uh this is my one ohm right one mega sorry one mega ohm let's try that yeah looks okay looks okay okay perfect uh something else uh let's try capacitance uh, now this is uh as you can see here yep uh, it's a 47 microfarad so let's go to okay so i think yeah uh, now as you can see here yeah i don't know exactly where i am but here it says 200 so we are on the right capacitance however for capacitance we'll have to switch to yeah now let's see yeah it's, yep it says 50 microfarad which is mm, close not the same but close yeah 50 all right let's look at the next component uh, another capacitance this is of course of smaller value This is 10 microfarads. Let's see this. Uh, yep. Yeah. Now this is the crazy part. We'll still have to be on the 200 range because the next lower is 2 microfarad, which is definitely out of range. So let's see this. Yeah, it's 8.5. So yeah, measuring on the lower side. First, we'll test the continuity meter. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, now the idea here is that whenever it sees a shot. Uh, it should beep yep there you go uh, pretty good and pretty fast and 
Yep, loud enough. That's nice. Okay. I wasn't expecting it that good. Uh, next test. Let's test some batteries. Let's see some DC voltage. So we are going to try one volt batteries, uh, one and a half, sorry, volt batteries. So this is a standard AAA. Now, normally this would go to the positive uh, terminal and this to the negative and this is how you measure it. And it is, uh, now this is a working battery. Yep, so 1.4 volts, looks nice. Now, if you were to reverse the polarity, so now you're connecting this to the negative and this to the positive, the good part is it'll still show you a negative voltage, negative 1.3. All right, uh, let's try a battery that's not working. Uh, this should not work, I believe this is not. It's, yeah, yeah, 0.9 volts. That's, yeah, that's, that's about right. Okay, now there are two tests that you can do for mains. One is checking if the wire is live. Now that is done with a single, with a single lid. Uh, make sure it's the positive one. And what you would do is you would just connect it to your mains. Nothing. Yeah. Now this is what I don't like. Uh, you can see here it's barely registering. It's happening. The LED is glowing. I'm not sure if you can see the glow. However, yep. Yeah. The sound is not there. Ah, not good. Not good. Okay, now let's check the mains voltage. Let's see if that works. Okay, now here the mains voltages are 220 to 240. So we need to take 750. And let's try this. Yeah, 260. That's too high. Okay, so definitely this multimeter requires some calibration it could also be because this is probably not a two true rms meter so it's probably just showing the peaks and not the actual voltage let's test an led so we go back to where we were here yes and uh, let's see this is a blue led and the negative is connected here and yep uh, yes, wow, it works. It works. Yep, so here the circuit is open, of course, it's the wrong polarity. And here, okay, okay, good enough. I have a 12 volt DC power, so this is the power source. First, let's get to DC voltage and let's get to 20. We are expecting somewhere around 200 out of this, oh, sorry, somewhere around 12 out of this. So, there you go. All right, that's the positive and uh, okay, 12 point, yeah, 12.5 volts. Yeah, okay, so this multimeter is definitely reporting a bit on the higher side. This multimeter also has a transistor gain test, which is called HFE, uh, that this is the connector. Now, what I have with me here, wow, it's showing gains even without starting anyway. Uh, here, this is an NPN transistor, N2222, and this is a socket where you're supposed to insert it, and you have to get the emitter collector in the base right. So let's try this, and nothing, absolutely nothing. As you can see, it has not moved. Let me try the other way around, and nothing. I doubt if this feature actually works it's it's just there because i guess many multimeters have it yeah i i, I mean, I, mean I, I barely feel any resistance at the bottom so i don't even know if this is connecting to anything one final component i have is a very interesting component uh, this is a photoresistor and the idea is the resistance depends on the amount of light falling on this okay so let's test this. So we first, yep, let's connect it and let's see what the resistance is. All right, so the resistance is very, very, very low. Now it's around, yeah, 2.5K. There, when it's directly pointing to the light, it's around 0.5, so it's 500 ohms. Uh, in fact, we can go one layer and check it, okay. So when it is directly facing, it's around 500 to 600 ohms, 
ohms and then when it's pointing away it's definitely more than 2k and see this is the challenge you have with a manual meter you cannot you cannot test this uh, one pointing towards and one pointing away so when it's pointing away it's around roughly around 2.7 in complete darkness it will be much higher and then when it's facing the light it's around yeah 600 ohms great that's it so that's with all the testing perfect so now the final verdict i would say is that uh, yeah i mean for ten dollars this is a decent multimeter uh, but you definitely don't want to use this for any mains work anything with high voltage or high current or high capacitance uh, if you do intend to do those kind of things i would definitely recommend a, a branded multimeter as compared to this one okay thank you and see you again next time